Wednesday night tailgate, where the spotlight is always on the positive. Tune in Thursday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time to hear your favorite NFL legends, players, and coaches sharing their stories. Now back to Chris and Bob. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happened to you tonight. Now back with us here on Thursday night tailgate at 1972 Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers. Let me remind you about Johnny's background. He's from Omaha, Nebraska. Stayed home and played his college ball at the University of Nebraska, where he helped the Cornhuskers to back-to-back national championships in 1970 and 71. In his three years there, he established an all-purpose NCAA yardage record of just under 5,600 yards. He broke virtually every offensive team record at Nebraska at the time. He was a two-time consensus All-American and a first-team All-Big 8 player. Won the Walter Camp Award and the Heisman Trophy in 72. And let me give you just one example of how great Johnny was. In the 1973 Orange Bowl, he helped Nebraska to a 40-6 to win over Notre Dame. In that game, he ran for three touchdowns, caught a 50-yard pass for another touchdown, threw a 54-yard touchdown pass, all before he was taken out of the game in the third quarter. In 2000, Johnny was named as Nebraska's Player of the Century, and in 1999, he was voted to the All-Century team by Sports Illustrated. He was a first-round draft pick in 73 by the San Diego Chargers, but instead signed a bigger contract with the Montreal Alouettes up in the Canadian Football League, which we'll talk about in a minute. Played for Montreal from 1973 to 1976, and then came back to the NFL playing for the Chargers in 77 and 78. And we are honored he is back with us tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Johnny, Chris, and Bob here. Thanks for coming back on the welcome show. Welcome back, Johnny. Well, you're welcome. Uh, Chris and Bob, you guys have a great show. This first time uh, I've been engaged with NFL football in about 10 years. <laughs> wow. College, but uh, it was uh, great listening. I'm always going to be a Chargers fan, uh, whether they move to uh, up uh, up uh, north there to, to L.A. or whether they go to Mexico. I'm still a, uh, a Chargers fan, but uh, it's hard staying in contact. Johnny, I want to get your memories of the 1971 game, Nebraska-Oklahoma. You guys went into that game ranked number one. Oklahoma was number two. The game had the largest television audience in college football history at the time. It was billed as the game of the century. What do you remember about being a part of that game? Well, it really was was the biggest college football game that had been played uh, up until that time. Uh, You know, we carried quite a few people in the road with us, so we had to uh, participating at the game, but we were number one team in the country and had the number, but Oklahoma was number two, and they also had the number one offense. It was really a standoff, but we did believe the number one that game was going to be that for championship. It turned out that we were able to, to win in the last seconds of the game. Uh, for, for the time, to really talk about the home return that I ran, uh, against, uh, uh, Oklahoma, but but the most important play of the game was a third down and 10 catch in the fourth quarter that I, I was able to pull in to keep the drive going so we keep the ball uh, to win, I think, 35 or 31. And, Johnny, I read your head coach, Bob Devaney, flew in food from Lincoln because he was worried that gamblers might get to the restaurant people, <clears throat> poison your food in order to influence the outcome of that game. Was that Did that actually happen? Uh, that's not fake news. That, that, that actually happened. We, we, we didn't really want to take any chances whatsoever on, on anything. So, uh, we were kind of paranoid and we were very serious about the game. And, um, uh, you know, things just were, things are different. I, I, I think things, stranger things have happened. It never had happened to us and it hasn't ever happened in my career, but it was a possibility. So we just wanted to, uh, to, to level the odds a little bit and bring it on stuff. Nobody was hurt, but we did think that way, yes. Bob, questions for Johnny? Hey, Johnny, Chris had mentioned your your different uh, athletic exploits at Tech High and uh, how you played different sports. And, and I'm just wondering, I'm sure there was more than just uh, football and baseball. And I, I'm just wondering if playing all the different sports, and we talk a lot about this with our guests, uh, guys that played multi-sports seem to attribute that to being a more complete athlete, which you would totally were. At the football level, I'm sure you you attribute a lot of your success to having played so many different sports. Well, yes, yes, I do. I was the last four sports uh, athlete in, in high school. They call it the Johnny Rogers rule now, 
but they ruled out that, that you can only play three sports because I played, uh, football, uh, basketball, the track and field and, uh, and baseball pretty much at the same time. Uh, but, uh, and I do attribute to being able to tumble, you know, being a gymnast, uh, along with basketball. I played basketball as well. I was in, uh, in basketball. Uh, the long jump and the triple jump really helped me in, in leap sport for the ball. The gymnastic helped me to, to be able to take the hits and be able to cuddle up when I'm hitting the ground. Uh, you know, the basketball, you know, helps your, your agility. Uh, I think everything contributed to me being a complete athlete. And then as time went on, I had to narrow it down, uh, to the two sports. And then when I was a sophomore, after my sophomore year, uh, although they uh, told me that I could play baseball and football, Bob Devaney came to me and told me that if I were to ball willingly, that they, I would be the first uh, guy that they had endorsed for the Heisman Trophy. So I took the deal. And Johnny, when you got to Montreal, your game obviously you could you could run the ball, catch the ball, punt returns. Now you're looking at a bigger field up in in Canada. I mean, when you got there, did you look at this field and say, "My goodness, this is Johnny Rogers friendly. This is going to be a lot of fun." <laughs> uh, yes, I did. It was a quicker game altogether. And in those days, you know, we have the NFL does a lot of passing now with the spread to throw, but in those days they were lining up and they were. Just Pretty much running the football up the middle quite a bit, and it was it was not nearly as fast as the Canadian football uh, was. So with the wider field, uh, when I first came up, they didn't have blocking on punt returns. They had 12 men on the field, and all 12 guys could go down and tackle one guy, and when and the other team was not allowed to block them. So when I came, they uh, they changed the rule, and I was able to uh, to implement the punt return field and Marv Levy. Uh, who was a special teams coach, uh, I think for Buffalo, uh, came pretty much at the same time. So we did have fun and we went to a couple of different great cups. Uh, we won, uh, one, we should have won two, but we did have fun and it was, uh, really a good time. Uh, lot, lot of long runs, a lot of long passes. Uh, a very nice city, very nice people. Uh, things really worked out uh, well. I was on a pro for the first four years that I was there. This is the year of my uh, first year. And it, I just really decided I would come back to the NFL just to see just how good I could be uh, with an, another level. And when I first got back, I didn't take into consideration that the weather changes. Uh, I ended up pulling a hamstring my first uh, year with about five or six games into the season, so that cut me short. And the next year, uh, one of my teammates stepped in practice and cracked my kneecap about the size of a silver dollar in it, and that was pretty much the end of my career. So, Johnny, talk about, you know, your decision to go play up in up in uh, the Canadian Football League for Montreal versus going to the Chargers and uh, into the NFL. What was what was the deciding factor? What made you, you know, look at the opportunity to go play in the NFL, but the, op- but the option to go to the CFL was that much more enticing? Well, it was just pretty much, uh, like I said, when I was uh, 11 years old, the only, I started thinking about $100,000 and, uh, I thought about it so much and talked about it so much that my mother, uh, told me that if I didn't stop talking like that, that they were going to, people were going to think I was crazy and take me out of the home. And I consistently <laughs> was adamant about, uh, she told me black people don't get $100,000. It was just crazy to, to think it and especially to talk it and I was talking it. Uh, all the time, and as, as life went on, I talked it even more. And I was very disappointed when I was the Heisman Trophy winner and the San Diego's uh, first round draft choice that they couldn't figure out a way uh, to get me that hundred thousand dollars. And when Montreal, uh, they I got off the plane and they asked me, "What would it take for you to bring that Heisman Trophy to the Canadian Football League and play for the Montreal Alouettes?" And of course, I said a hundred thousand dollars, and they said okay, and that was it. Now, the only problem that I had in that scheme of things, like I said, as a young man, I really didn't know what $100,000 was. It was just, when I was 10, 11 years old, the most money I'd ever heard. Uh, as I went along there, towards that, those days, I heard somebody talking about a million. And so I started thinking about a million dollars. And before long, the next year, uh, I was the first million dollar football player to be, to play in the Canadian Football League. To sign a very lucrative contract that was probably one of the largest contracts in the NFL and the CFL at that particular time. Wow. 
And Johnny, it's, it's been a little while since Nebraska has been in the national championship conversation. And, and I went to UCS. So you got my coach, you got, yeah, you got my coach Scott Frost now there in Nebraska taking over the program. Got off to a bit of a rough start last Saturday against Colorado, but how do you feel about Nebraska's opportunity to get back into a, the playoffs? Well, we, I, I feel our future is so bright that we got to wear shades. Uh, I think that we're definitely going into the right direction. Scott has a, a, a good grasp on trying to, to get talent and get it deep. Uh, I think we really got thrown off a little bit uh, by not been able to play the first game. We got we got uh, rained out on the football game, and we had a team that we probably would have been more prepared for. And although I think we played better than Colorado, they ended up winning with the score, which is uh, to their attribute. We will definitely give them that. But I think that uh, I think that we're really going to be all right. It's my my hopes and most of the state is that we are able to go to a bowl game this year. Uh, that we'll be happy uh, just for the fact that we're progressing and going in the right direction. And we really believe that with the, the assistance that Scott is getting from uh, uh, the players that he's brought in, the coaching staff, uh, the state of Nebraska is definitely behind him, uh, that we're going to be going in the next uh, in the right direction and that we're going to be on national championship caliber here in just a few years. And, Johnny, when you were there, you guys beat Oklahoma two out of the three years. But I'm curious, on campus, what's it like on campus the weekend when it's Oklahoma week? What's it like in, in Lincoln on, in, during Oklahoma week? Well, it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to really describe it because it's it, it's like the whole state is it says, says come down to that to the stadium and whether they can get in the game or not, uh, they're present. And uh, Oklahoma, we really had a lot of respect for Oklahoma. We never ever had any animosity towards them. We just figured the better they were, the more the, the, the bigger the game was going to be, and the more that we were going to get out of it. And they they always gave us great games. Uh, their fans were good. Our fans were were just fine. And uh, we've made a lot of different friendships with the guys, with the with the sooner uh, players. And and we sent between the two teams, we probably have fifteen twenty guys that were able to go and play and play in the NFL. Bob, one more for Johnny before we let him go. Yeah, sure, Johnny. I mean, it's it's amazing how life pans out. You were an American football hero in college, and then this week, seven years ago, uh, Johnny, I was reading that you were honored by the Alouettes with a special ceremony up there, and it had been 35 years since you were there, and the fans were going crazy, standing ovation. It must have been very memorable for you, and, and you'll always be beloved in another country. It's amazing to me. Well, I really, uh, I had a love affair with uh, the Canadian Football League, and the Canadian people, uh, it was a really a great time, a great experience. I really don't have any regrets by uh, going in the direction that I went in. Although I would have liked to have been more of a made a more of an impact in the NFL, but in football in general, uh, I've done fairly well. I have an award right now that you guys, I'm not know if you're familiar, that I give away an award uh, for college football now for the best punt return and kickoff guy. Uh, in college football, and we're in our seventh year. And if you want to look at it, it's called the JetAwards.com. Uh, and we also give an award to the Legends player because before 2011, uh, the only category in college football they didn't have an award for was the punt return and the kickoff guys. And so now we give awards to, to the guys back in the day who didn't really get an award, uh, like myself, Billy White Shoes, Johnson, Rick Upchurch, are some of the guys that we've awarded uh, since that time. Uh, and we take the money that we use to give kids scholarships to, uh, to Metro Community College to go into the trade. So uh, we use sports for the attention getter to get kids to transition from from just going to college, trying to get a four-year degree, to going into the trade, trade, which our, our country really needs more participation in now. And, and so things have really worked out. Things have really turned their work and worked out. I've been fortunate enough to, to have a lot of support uh, from our fan base, uh, from people all around the country, uh, just different states. And, and this, this year we were able to, we started off with one scholarship and uh, this year we were able to give a hundred kids, uh, uh, scholarships of, um, $5,000. We have $2,000 that we give them, $2,000 the university, and then there's another $5,000 that the low income kids, uh, get as a Pell grant. And so, 
I think that we're moving in the right direction in that way, too. And they have a similar program in New York that they're doing. Uh, and it looks like we're going to have a partnership. So things are really coming together, fellas. That's fantastic stuff, Johnny. How can our listeners stay up to date with what you're doing, whether they have the opportunity to follow you online or it's on social media? Well, they could, I have a Facebook, uh, Johnny Rogers of Facebook. Uh, they can follow me on Facebook. Uh, my website is uh, uh, jrspeaking.com. I have a speaking website where I do public speaking all around the country. If anybody's interested, uh, they can certainly contact me off of my website. And they can also stay in touch with us with the jetaward.com. Uh, and I also have just written a book called 10 Minutes of Insanity. Uh, you can pick that up at 10minutesofinsanity.com or uh, uh, the other, uh, not Google, but the, uh, the book website that they have. I forget, uh, there's uh, another website that they have uh, for that. But it's uh, the accumulation of my first 20 years, uh, the stories of some of the things that we have just talked about, going into the Canadian Football League and NFL and uh, we'll have another book coming out shortly that checks on the next 20 years that, uh, that will include the Canadian Football League. Well, Johnny, it's, a, it's certainly a privilege for us to have you as part of the show. We can't thank you enough for taking time out of your night and away from the, the uh, event that you're at tonight to come on and be a part of the show. Thank you so much for your time, and we hope you'll come back and join us again a little bit later on in the season. I certainly will. Just call me anytime. I certainly enjoyed your show, and uh you're going to force me to keep up with my charges a little bit better. <laughs> <That's laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Take care, Johnny. All, All right, the best to you and your family. You. Good luck. All right. Good night. Appreciate it. Thank you. See you, Johnny. That is uh, former uh, Nebraska and uh, Montreal Alouettes and, uh, and San Diego Chargers and certainly you know best known for being the 1972 Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Rogers. Great stuff out of Johnny, Bob. What an amazing career he had both in college and then, as you point out, going up to Montreal and really lighting it on fire up in the Canadian Football League. Yeah, people forget if, if they're not old enough or how great an athlete this guy was. I mean, if you go on YouTube, it just uh, just search Johnny Rogers' punt returns, and, and you'll be treated to some of the most incredible stuff you've ever seen. But what speed and, and elusive nature that he had, Chris. And, again, uh, look at his stats in the Montreal uh, for the Alouettes, too. Incredible how uh, what kind of all-around player this guy was and uh it's always a pleasure to speak with him.